The National Institutes of Health just launched its $130 million Bridge to Artificial Intelligence program. Grace Peng is one of the coordinators. Grace, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mimi. So what's the overall goal of this program? The overall goal is to prepare biomedical research data for next generation artificial intelligence and machine learning models to use to, to change and improve the way we do medicine. So how is artificial intelligence currently being used? Well, artificial intelligence is growing in its current usage. Um, as you may know, it's, it's used a lot in image processing and looking at images of different parts of our body, uh, detecting cancer, uh, detecting um, um, diseases in our eye. Um, it's used in looking at our heart signals and detecting whether or not we're gonna have a heart attack. Um, but it's very focused on single signals like that. Um, just very narrowly focused, looking at a lot of data, and, and the machines try to understand what that really means. So it, it has a lot of promise, but it's very limited at this point. What prompted the creation of this program now? So this program was spawned by the advice of our community, our research community, and they basically told us in their advisory report that we cannot move any further with the current data that we're using um, because the current data is incomplete. It doesn't have the information that a machine needs to know in order to fully understand the context of the data, the ethics behind the data, the biases that might be attributed to data. And it doesn't really take advantage of the power of artificial intelligence that could be used to really help predict our diseases in a personalized way. Well, so let's talk about that power. What's the vision? How could AI be used to ultimately benefit the health of Americans? So AI could be used to really stitch together all kinds of modalities of data. So for example, when I talked about the images uh, that are currently being uh, taken through x-rays or, or um, ocular images or heart rate monitors, um, it'd be, the vision is to perhaps stitch together different data types so that the machines can interpret what they mean for a specific person. So imagine when you go to a doctor, the doctor always asks for your health history and asks you, what happened when you started feeling this way? And, and those are the things that machines can't do. They don't have the humans inside of them to infer things. And so they need to know the history of the data. They need to know what was the context of the data on which it was collected? What was the gender of the human operator? Um, how was the patient situated? What was the temperature in the room? And those things could matter in terms of how a machine would interpret the data to predict whether or not uh, we might have cancer or heart disease or have um, multi multiple symptoms and multiple diseases that interact with each other. So what's the biggest limitation then when it comes to using AI for medical research? The biggest limitation is to address the, eth the ethics associated with using artificial intelligence. This is um, the, the promoting of, of human biases in, in the machine. Yes, and so the biggest challenge is to incorporate into the machine knowledge of, for example, um, the biases, as you mentioned, that might occur, artifacts that might occur uh, in the data, um, and then addressing privacy issues and consent issues. Um, and, and, and actually collecting the data so that the, the people that we're collecting the data from um, understand that their data is kept private, but yet we know the attributes of the data to help us uh, program these next generation models. And following on to that, you know, AI systems are only as good as the data that's feeding into them. Exactly. So how do you make sure you have good data? That is exactly the point of this program. So this program is to really start with um, thinking about a big problem, a grand challenge, a grand biomedical behavioral challenge, and having us bring together diverse experts from not only the biomedical and behavioral science fields, the engineering fields, the data science fields, but also ethicists, legal experts, anthropologists, to look at the legal issues behind the privacy and consent issues, incorporate those ethics, and standardize it into the tools and how we actually measure um, readings from the human body in order to prepare the data 
so that future AI ML models will be used. So this is a, a pretty new program. Yes. Where are things right now? Have you awarded contracts? We just announced the awards last week, in fact. We announced the uh, awards of seven awards. Three of the awards will be making uh, the Bridge Center, which will harmonize the data generation projects, which are motivated by these grand challenges. And so we're very excited to begin this consortium effort. We really want community input to assess us the whole way to make sure that the data will be usable and ethical and diverse. Um, and so that we can use future artificial intelligence. Well, speaking of assessment, how do you define success for this program? Success will be data that has the associated attributes that the machine can understand. So if you will, our deliverable will be to produce um, what we call data sheets and model cards, or maybe nutrition labels for the data, so we know what is behind the data. Uh, and success will be the modelers telling us that we can actually mine the data and make accurate predictions for a future precision medicine. All right, well, Grace, good luck with this program. Thanks so much for being on. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.